Hey, everybody. Welcome to Grace and Fire. And look who I have this way. Aunt Lynn. Yes, there we are. There we are. Oh, this isn't the normal to have you on on my channel like this. This is awesome. Oh, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. So for those who don't know, Aunt Lynn is from the Ann Lynn Show, or shall I say, the official Ann Lynn Show. That's right. And um, I tell you what, Glenda, there's some great things going to be coming up on our channel. Oh, I'm so wait. excited. I am so, so, so excited. I, I am too. Oh, wonderful things coming. <laughs> and your mother, Ann, she's super excited about it. So. I know, I know. And she couldn't join us today, but that's okay. That's um, right. It's This is really my real life Aunt Lynn, uh, for those yes. who don't know. Um, and we live pretty close to one another. Oh, we do. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we are um, always like running into each other. And then sometimes people will send gifts to Aunt Lynn via my mailbox, which is totally right. fine because we really do see each other and and I really do deliver it, don't I? Yes, you do. And um, I got to see you Saturday. We um, had a like a ladies a pre Mother Day lunch together, um, and it was one. wonderful. So you delivered a package to me that I, I won over at. Lazy Days with Jesse and Lisa. I was in there live last week and here it came. Lynn oh at Ann Lynn. It sure, <laughs> so did. it sure did. And uh, I got a little message to open that box before I took it to you. Oh, yes. Yes. So um, it was a box for both of us. And I honestly wasn't expecting anything because it was just kind of like, let me just make sure this gets off to Aunt Lynn. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was a huge surprise. But I think you should uh, show everybody what you got from Lazy Days Ahead with right. Jesse and Lisa. Well, they had up there, they had a cookbook to give away. Not just a cookbook, but a whoop. Oh, there we go. Well, cookie recipes. Yes. And so... Um, Jesse and Lisa, if I can make some pretty good cookies, I'll be sending them your way because I think someone likes cookies. <laughs> if you need somebody to quality control them before they go out. I will do that. I will do that. And then look at this. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You got the big Texas bookmark. I did. Isn't that great? That's oh, great. my goodness. I can use it because I can, you know, I like to read. Then... Miss Lisa sent me something. I was not expecting this, Lisa, but thank you. Um, at the Ann Lynn show, we give granny kisses. So to both of you. But here's what I received. This one um, is going, my husband, Mr. Cameraman, he is going to love, love, love this. Guava habanero jam. Whoa. What? Yes. Guava. What? And um, that is so cool. My son has a spice company. So they like the, do, 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 do. they like the spices. Yes, he does. And it's really good spices. And he Thank likes you. all things spicy hot. Uh, yes, well, yes. Flavor, that I will say. It's, but yes, they like flavor more than heat. There's flavor. Mm -hmm. And then uh, listen to this one, Glenda. A peach mango. Peach mango. Hello. Oh my goodness. goodness. Now I just opened this up today. Oh, you so, did. Uh, I yes, I was I was a good girl. I had my package here in the office. And so today I'm just being good. And I, I just now opened these. Oh my goodness. Or I would be telling you how they tasted because um and that's going on some toast after a while. Now, that is Sir Grace's favorite. Okay. Oh. God, you'll enjoy it. And then, are you ready for this? Because this one is going to um, give me a taste of Thanksgiving. Ooh. And I love 
my one of my favorite days at Cracker Barrel is Thursday because that's the turkey dinner day. Oh yes, that is my favorite too. I oh, love my favorite. I love to go over. <laughs> yes, so, yes. This is carrot cake jam. Look at that beautiful color. Oh my gosh. Carrot cake jam. So and I know Jesse said it um it reminds him of Thanksgiving. So again, yeah. to both of you, thank you so much. It was a, it was really neat that as that wheel went around, ding, that was a blessing. Ah, thank you. I'll tell you, I uh, I know that they are such generous and such uh -huh. kind people. And to, to show how generous and kind they are, yes. they also sent me a gift, which I wasn't on a wheel. It was one of those, I got a sweet note from Lisa. Um. And in that sweet note, it said that I get to be her taste tester for some things. Oh, and I love me some good jams and jellies yes. and preserves. Yes. And Lisa does not disappoint. So if you've yes. ever had her jams or jellies, you guys, you know exactly what I'm saying. She yes. does not disappoint. She is an excellent jam and jelly preserver. I mean, oh, so I'm really excited to jump into these. I haven't opened um, the jars, the actual jars yes, to taste yes. test at the timing of this filming, but Lisa, I will be letting you know how they are. Um, she sent me the guava habanero jam as well. I'm yes. excited about this one. I, I'm thinking maybe putting a little bit of this like on some chicken. I'm mm -hmm. having chicken tonight. Ooh. Just a little, and maybe bake it like just on top. I bet that's going to be really good. And then, um, of course, she sent the carrot cake jam. Yeah. So Thanksgiving is, you know what? We should like have Thanksgiving together on Thursday, you know, like virtually. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. just say, hey, it's Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> take and that with me to Cracker Barrel. I wonder if we could do that. Let's let's do well, it. Let's just take it. What in. they don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> in our purses. <laughs> Pull it out. <laughs> to get right on. No way he needs to know nothing. Mm. Um, and then she sent me cranberry cherry. <gasps> oh, yeah. Now, I love both those flavors. And I've never heard of a jam um, oh. with these two. So I'm really excited to try that, being one of my favorites. And then I need to make, you know, I make really good ice cream. Oh, yes. Your um, bourbon. Bourbon vanilla is off the hook, That's off the good. chain, whatever. It's yeah. delicious. It's so good. So I like Jess from um, Roots and Refuge. And she has a thing that she says, to, uh, store-bought tomatoes taste like disappointment. So yeah. I also think store-bought ice cream tastes like disappointment. You've got to make it from scratch. It's the only yeah. way to go. So I need to make some ice cream soon because she sent me a strawberry drizzle. Did she? Did um, you? <laughs> no, I'm really excited to have homemade ice cream and then Lisa's strawberry drizzled so, on top. That is going to be like heaven. Wow. What night am I coming over for um, just for dessert? You know what time I, or you know where I live at, actually. You know, you just come over. Let me give me a day notice so that way I can um, make the ice cream the day before. All right. And then um, I'm really excited about this. I. I love balsamic vinegars, like a really good one. One of my favorites is a fig. Oh, balsamic. Mm -mm -mm. Make it, put it in your salad. So anyhow, she sent me a balsamic basil plum jam. And it's not a little jar. It's the big one. Oh. And I love plums. Yes. And I love basil. In fact, I, I'm trying to grow more basil this year. It's a goal of mine. So anyhow but i'm really excited to give this a try and i'm thinking maybe a little bit of this on some pork or even chicken as well that would be really good and bake mm -hmm. that as a glaze so i'm really really excited about that oh that is um my son picked up some ba uh, basil plant mm -hmm. i'm trying to remember it just cannot remember the name um of the basil that he purchased mm -hmm. but it's going to be a dark basil i think Oh, uh, he showed me. It's a purple. Yes. It's a purple one. Purple basil. I I don't mm -hmm. remember ever seeing a purple basil. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes, he's going to grow that, and so he's. We should have some. Um, 
uh, what do we usually make with basil and olive oil? A pesto. A pesto. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we love that. We're big, big fans of, of that. So. Well, I'm growing Genovese basil currently. It's already in the ground and the plants are probably as big as my pinky. Um, <laughs> and then at the same place that you and I went to on Saturday, it's yeah. also a very huge um, herbal uh, nursery. That's yeah. like their specialty is herbs. And I purchased holy basil. And I'm really excited because that's a perennial. It'll come, it'll reseed itself and come back. So I'm really excited to have some of that. Um, and then I have some cinnamon basil. I'm trying to figure out a couple more other types. Um, I again back to that roots and refuge uh, video that was put out last year. Uh, she said that she has a five basil um recipe for tea and it makes a really good summer tea so i'd like to try this especially owning a freeze dryer freeze dry that and then you know make some as it goes you know yes yes and then you also grow your own stevia i do i actually uh freeze dried it and i packaged it up this morning and oh. I, I have more growing okay. I gave it a good haircut so um, I'm really excited about that. And then I grew uh, or I have a, a apple mint as well that I purchased. Yes. Yes. I, yes. I'm so excited. And oh, gosh, Aunt Lynn, I can't remember the name of the other herb right now. It's like anise, I think it is. Um, it had a licorice flavor, whatever one it was, because we talked about it tasting like uh, licorice, didn't licorice we? Licorice or a root beer. It's got a little bit of both. One had, yes. And one had. Yes, it did. Yeah, yeah. So I I bought these plants on Saturday and they were so tall. So I went ahead and I chopped them down. Okay. To be like that far. I, I did some research to make sure I wasn't just going to butcher them, but they're perennials. So right. they'll come back. But apparently that helps encourage growth. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I'm really excited about that. So that's all in the freeze. I freeze dried it. And then I did chives. I've had chive plants for a couple of years. Yes. And I just freeze dried a bunch of chives. So I've got some herbs. I'm working on that this year is just having my own herbs um in my pantry yeah um wow. that way i can purchase them i have grown them so yeah i'm excited about that but well, um i know saw you um saturday that you sent um you sent uh your uncle and your cousin yeah. some hot very um, hot vegetable soup mm -hmm. and canned and and beautiful and I know that they're having it. As, in fact, your uncle had it on the um, out on the counter to have it for lunch, and that they they had to drop off a car and get it looked at. So they he just left it sitting there. So I know that when he gets back, that is going to be opened, and and they're going to have a a late lunch or something like that. So oh, I'm excited for him to try that. So oh. it is a ball recipe. Um, from my cookbook and it is a very good Southwest veggie soup. And yeah. I had so much produce last year that I made several batches and there's no way I can eat the whole thing. It's just me. Sir Grace doesn't like um, hot like that um, soups and things. So it's just me and I'm going, who can I share this with? <laughs> you know, <laughs> my cousin, <laughs> pass it on. <laughs> so well, I they are going to have it after a while. Yes. Oh, I hope that they enjoy it. It's got lots of flavor and it's it's hot too. So oh, it looks delicious. I'm gonna have to taste it though. I will have to, I'll okay. put crackers in it, you know, so it kind of absorb it. And I'll have my milk right there and and I'm gonna <laughs> I, I have to taste it. It just sounds so <laughs> delicious. It's good. It's really oh, good. Anything you make is is wonderful. So oh thank you. Thank you. Oh, I've been canning again. I found a bunch of tomatoes at the bottom of my freezer and I'm like what am I going to do with these things so yeah. um so I made spaghetti sauce from scratch with balsamic vinegar and red wine and, oh, it, and it's so good and I made them in small jars um a little bit bigger than this okay. and um, just for Sir Grice and I to make like a small pot of spaghetti so sure, I'm really sure. excited about that. I make my own meatballs from scratch and I freeze them and then you just pop them out when you need them. So it makes a quick meal. So I'm really excited about that. And then um, I canned up some pinto, not pinto, some black beans, excuse me, some black. Oh, okay. Okay. So that way um, I have them on my shelf. They're already cooked. It's ready to go for any recipe that I need. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah, I have just been going in town. Oh, and then the other tip uh, for anybody who has a freeze dryer or a dehydrator that's getting ready to go into gardening season, or if you're watching in Australia or overseas, um, you have a lot of tomatoes. Don't forget you can dehydrate or freeze dry those tomato skins mm -hmm. and then uh, blend them up into a powder and it makes a really good tomato paste alternative. And that's what I, I have a batch ready to go from those tomato skins. It's going to okay. go in the freeze dryer here in a little bit. So, okay. I know when we were on vacation uh, together recently, you were taking the um, eggshells and baking them. <laughs> I, did. I did. I know it's kind of a weird thing to do on vacation, but I'm like, these are all my girls' eggs. Yes. And they're eggshells. And I'm taking them back home to put them in the garden. Yeah, so we'll be doing that again, won't we, soon? Yeah, yeah, I know it's a weird thing to do, but it that's what I do at home. I have a Ziploc bag that stays in my freezer, and anytime I make anything with eggs, I just I put up the eggshells in there, give them a little crush because it saves on space yes. in the freezer, and then I bake them at low temperature for about 30 minutes to kill off anything, and then crush them up real good, put them in the garden, and I've never had a calcium problem Wow. Um, see with tomatoes or anything because of that. That is amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, again, I want to thank, um, I want to thank Jesse and Lisa. Yes. Days ahead for, let me just pick it up here again. No, I can't pick them. Let's see if I can pick them on mine. There we go. Now it's working. Okay. I don't want to drop them, but there you go. Thank you. Yes. Oh, and a tip, Aunt Land, make sure you take the bands off of it. She just does that for shipping so that way the the um, the lids don't come off. But take your bands off for storage. That's a tip. Oh, and that way you know you've got a good seal on your jars. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, until you start to use them and then put your bands back on, obviously. I started to say, all right. Oh, so I can take them off now. And yeah. Then put them okay. Gotcha. He does that for shipping just to make sure it gets to you safe and sound. It doesn't pop okay. off in the box. So. Oh, great. Thank you. That, I, that's a good thing to know. Yes. You know, yes. Something else, um, Glenda. Yes. Uh, that is good to know. Yes. Is, um, we're in the month of May and, yes. you know, May uh, brought in spring, didn't it? Yes. It spring and it brought in, I know, I know everyone is so busy right now getting their gardens out and, uh, it's just a busy month for you, isn't it? It month is. Day, Memorial Day. And speaking of Memorial Day, I just want to um, remind everyone that the month of May is marked officially as Military Appreciation Month. It and it's a um, special month for those in the military and those out of the military. Yes. Um, do you know Congress designated May as National Military Appreciation Month in 1999? to ensure that the nation was given a chance to publicly show their appreciation for the troops past and present. So isn't it wonderful? May has, has several special um, military um, acknowledgements. And I know that you are going to share with us a couple other special days in May. Absolutely. Absolutely. But before I go, I want to say thank you for your service, Aunt Lynn, to our country. Thank I you. so dearly love it. And Jesse, um yes. for lazy days he's an army veteran so jesse yes we're both thank yes, you yes they're both are thank you for your service and sacrifice our yes. family is so rich in military um my it's grandfather great. was in the army your dad was in the army and uh your husband was a marine and a soldier both yes and the national guard yep and um my stepdad was in the army Yes. Anne of Ann Lynn show, her husband. Yes. Um, my father-in-law was a soldier. Yes. I have another grandfather that was in the Navy. And I cannot forget mm -hmm. Sir Grace, who yes. was a combat wounded warrior from the U.S. Air Force. I love you, baby. We love you. Yes. And thank Sir you so Grace. much to everybody who has served in our armed forces. We appreciate you. We know that freedom is not free. I live that as a reminder every single day. Um, as I'm a military caregiver, um, I've shared a little bit about this in the past, but I think it's so important that we remember our uh, military and veteran caregivers, which yes. May is also uh, month of the military 
caregiver. Um, there are 5.5 million caregivers in our nation and they sit quietly behind our veterans and um, just they don't some of them don't even realize that they're a caregiver and i want to like throw some things out at you if you're taking care of medications for a veteran if you're taking them to the vet to the va hospital or medical appointments um if you are helping with post-traumatic stress uh, some of that de-escalation and calming if you are having to help them get in and out of a shower or a bed you are a caregiver and I don't want you to feel isolated. I don't want you to feel alone. There is help. I'm going to put a plug in as an Elizabeth Dole Fellow. There are resources. And I want you to check out www.hiddenheroes.org. And I'm going to say that again, www.hiddenheroes.org. They are the only nonprofit organization that uh, looks at um, solely looks at helping the caregiver only so please check it out there are resources they are not a hands-on but uh, they do offer respite care through the foundation so uh, with the help of the bob hope fund so there is re excuse me respite and also our hidden helpers which are the children of our wounded warriors thank yeah. you for your service and sacrifice as well but I also want to say that this past Friday, May 12th, was Military Spouse Appreciation Day. And it is, um, it is to make sure that we acknowledge the service and sacrifice of our military spouses. So um, I just want you to know that you are the heartbeat of our military. Did, I'm going to say that one more time. You are the heartbeat of our military. So thank you so much. Um, for what you're doing to support your service member while they are on active duty. And if you're a former spouse, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, and then Memorial Day is coming up. We cannot forget Memorial Day. Yeah. That is a day that um, we remember those who have gone before us, who have maybe made the ultimate sacrifice while on active duty. Um, and it's a solemn day. It's not a happy day for a lot of our veterans who are living because they are taking time to remember their friends and loved ones that have passed away. Um, it is a time for silence. It's a time for mourning and it's a time for reflection. Um, so I want, you know, if you get a chance to go out, a lot of the cemeteries, there will be a service honoring our veterans. Yes, they will. Yeah, and it's definitely something that um, is very touching and very moving. Mm -hmm. Many years ago, I was I had a trip in Washington D.C. for the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, and I had an um, a request come from a friend of mine who had friends buried in Section Six at Arlington National Cemetery, and I that's the only thing I did for a friend was to go run and look for these friends of theirs and take pictures. And while um, I was there, I met a mother who had lost her son to suicide because he bore the battles of of the of the brain. Yes. Um, remembering, you know, um it, you know what happened overseas. I'm gonna say it like that. Um, and that mother still holds a special spot in my heart. She doesn't know me. I don't know her, but the conversation um has left a life effect on my heart mm -hmm. and and then i also had the opportunity um there's a nonprofit called taps t-a-p-s and i was at the marine barracks doing watching the parade which was oh, oh. <laughs> those marine parades amazing. <laughs> amazing oh my gosh it was an honor to sit there but I sat there and watched as the children of from TAPS walked in. And for those who don't know, those are the children who lost a parent due to war. And they walked in. And I'm going to tell you, as adult fellows who are caregivers, there was not a single dry eye as we watched those children come in. And they were they honored those children. They recognized them, but they also took these children to Arlington National Cemetery mm -hmm. for the ones who have parents that are buried there to see oh. their parents. Yeah, I mean, you just talk about 
I mean, just a touching moment to see, you know, and, and I actually have a friend who has three children um, and I connected her to TAPS and I said, girl, you've got to go to TAPS. Good. And not only now is she living, she's thriving in life. And one of her kids who went through that program mm -hmm. is now a mentor helping out other kids. And I just think, oh my gosh, how awesome is that? Yes. How oh. awesome is that? that it's a full circle moment. So, so this is a very special month yes. for our nation to take yes. a moment, yes. take a pause and, and just remember that freedom just genuinely is not free. There are a lot of sacrifice and a lot of stories out there. Um, and if you get an opportunity to sit down and talk with a veteran and, and they have the opportunity to share their story, just, just listen. Yes. It'll blow you away. You know, Glenda, for so many people in the U.S., Memorial Day is the opening of, uh, in their minds, summer uh, picnics, uh, games, uh, family reunions. But like you said, if while, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but if they would also remember and take a moment, like you said, to, to reflect on what is Memorial Day? You know, it used to be Decoration Day and we would um, decorate um, uh, the cemeteries, you know. Right. Um, but um, really, if they would just take that moment and maybe if we, you know, each one of us have an opportunity, uh, like you said, to visit the cemetery and you'll see flags. So many um, local towns, they will now, um, when I visit your grandfather, um, yeah. my dad, um, there will be a new fresh flag there because mm -hmm. it will be, have been put there by someone, right? Someone. Yes. And um, and so, and my uncle will have one. Um, you know, every military uh, vet that is there, usually yeah. there's a marker that says it has a marker at their at their feet mm -hmm. and it tells the service and, you know, that they were in the military. So, yeah. yes, just remember before we go out and and have a party, just remember why we're able to have these parties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Why are, why are we, you know, able to do this? And Glenda, what you said, will you say it again? That freedom, what? Is genuinely not free. Yeah. Someone Gen has purchased that for us. Yeah. The ultimate sacrifice. And then the veterans that are living through it, like you said, with wounds. And the hidden heroes behind them. And the children behind that. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. It's bigger than what I think most people realize. Um, with the service and sacrifice for this country. And um, I'll tell you, it's a it, it's an honor to be a caregiver, but I don't wish this life on anybody. But I, that's why I sit back and say freedom truly is not free. It just isn't. I mean, I've lived it with many deployments and raising children on my own. Yes, and, um, you know, I I'm just going to touch on this just a tiny bit for those who I must speak a little bit of um, some military terminology. I was a key spouse when my husband was on active duty and a key spouse is responsible for taking care of the families that are left behind. Okay. And also reaching out to the parents. If, if the child doesn't have a spouse, reaching out to that service member's parent to make sure that they're hearing from their child. That was some of the work that I had done. And we did training on what's going to happen if, our service member made the ultimate sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I knew exactly what the process was. I could tell you ex to details what our command had said to do and what is mm -hmm. going to happen to those families and the support that they were going to get. But what I can tell you is that not once in that training did I ever know what's going to happen with a service member that comes back that's critically wounded. Not once. Yeah. Yeah. Not once in my key spouse training. And I have talked to commanders about that in Washington, D.C. many times that we need to get that changed. And I want to if the key spouse program has not been revamped, I hope that one day it will be because it needs to include what happens to our wounded warriors. But I can tell you that I had a really, 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 really supportive team with Air Force Wounded Warriors, which is not Wounded Warrior Project. This is a part of the Department right. of Defense. Right. 
And right. they really right. guided me through that transition, that medical board, what I needed to do for Sir Grace and getting him set up for medical care. And then they helped me rise up as a caregiver for him. And then the Elizabeth Dole Foundation came into my life in 2014 as I represented my state for two years on active service. And then I just do volunteer from time to time and try to pass out information, whether I'm at the VA hospital right. or giving speeches. Yeah. Um, with different nonprofits or whatnot. And I have to tell you, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation taught me not to shut up. So I'm yeah. all sharing that information. There is help. <laughs> You're not, and, and I, you know. And I'm just going to interrupt you um, for a moment. I was privileged, everyone, to be with Glenda um, at her first major speech. Yeah. And it was downtown in a major uh, uh, city. Yep. And um, I have to tell you, there were hundreds of people there and this is her first time ever sharing yeah it was so me. difficult too <laughs> I, went, I was i was so proud of you 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 just spoke with such grace and so informative and you knew what you were talking about and you you came from your heart and i i tell you everyone there i know they were just touched um and i i tell you i was just the proudest aunt could be in that whole city that day so Hello. it was a blessing and i thank you that you invited me to um come with you and and share in those few moments that you got to speak that was an honor that you were there with me and such a great support team to have you too especially for my first one because was, i remember how nervous it was and it was with the department of veterans affairs it yes. was their event uh, for our local hospital and um, regional center and it was just it was so so scary <laughs> well, and there were some real major um speakers mm. some national speakers were there yeah. um, um and you just you just held your own right right with the best of them girl <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you your well, passion that, that uh started a thing yeah. yeah yeah it started a thing for me because then after that grandma got to hear me speak yes with a small um nonprofit, and then i went on after that i kind of had that boost of confidence <laughs> and i've given many before um even within the air force i'm an air force ambassador so i've even given the uh, speech in front of uh, different people within the air force and then uh, i had the opportunity before the big c happened uh at a gala in front of 5,000 people, we had our story filmed. And, um, and just before that, I had to go out on stage. Um, I was so grateful because Chef Robert Irvine was back there. And anybody who's ever had an opportunity to ever meet Chef Robert Irvine knows that he is a happy cusser. And I kind of <laughs> I kind of needed that um backstage because they filmed me ugly crying. And yes. you don't ugly cry and you go out on on stage. I mean I was yes. like, why did they do that? They caught me ugly crying. But, <laughs> you know? So no I, one, no one is a lovely crier. I don't think. <laughs> no, and I got to see, I got to see the film before it went, you know, before it went live, at, uh, at home. So I, I tried to like prepare myself, and the chef was back there, and he was just cracking jokes, but he was happy cussing, and I'm like, thank you, Lord, something, you know, <laughs> just to make me laugh as I'm listening to this, and then. And then they announced my name in the nonprofit yeah. we were with, which was not the Elizabeth Dole Foundation. It was right. another nonprofit that I represented for this event. But uh, I had to go out and I was like, OK, I can do this thing. So if I ever run into him again, he's getting a big old yeah. hug. I got to see him two years in a row, but I haven't seen him since. But if I ever I'm going to really give him a big hug because that meant the world to me. <laughs> All the things yeah, him, you've got to be at every speech I have to give. <laughs> You are coming with me. With me. That's right. You break the ice for me. Yeah, that's all I need. I, I, maybe some of his food because it's good too. You know, I have to say I got to eat some, but yeah, yeah, he he was just a happy guy and just so sweet and so kind. And uh, yeah, so that was my other speech story, you know, of just being able to have somebody there to support. So it was really nice. But but let back to what's really important. Mm -hmm. If you are on active duty, you are a veteran, you are a caregiver, you are the child of a wounded warrior. This is a month to celebrate you. Yes. And 
for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, lest we never forget. That's right. That's exactly right. Yes. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. I will say, um, we've been together a couple of few times at dinner shows. And one dinner show we went to in particular last year, I do believe, when I know it wasn't it wasn't the Pledge of Allegiance or anything, but you know, when they brought the, the flags out. All right. <clears throat> do you know that I don't think ten percent of the people there stood? I mean like two thousand people and it was rare to see anyone that we stood we but no one else stood. A few. And then uh, just recently we were at another dinner theater. And I'd say that was closer to 90% of the people stood, didn't they? Yes, they did. And I'll admit, I tried standing. I couldn't get up because my husband's service dog was between my feet and we were crowded. And I'm like, I me yeah. tell you how awful I felt. And I'm like, I'm trying to get up, but this dog and the chair. And <laughs> you stood up on the inside. That, that counts. I did. I did. But I will admit, I didn't stand up because the the service dog was in between yeah. my feet and the chair. And then there was somebody right behind me standing yeah. up. So I'm like, I can't quite get up. But I'm like, hand on the heart. Hand yeah, on yeah, the heart. I saw that. I saw that. So I was so worried about that. I, I felt so awful. But oh, no, 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 no. But the working service dog, Sir Grace's service dog, was was paying attention to Sir Grace. And he was just kind of, he's a big boy. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> big, lovely boy. He, he is he is and he's a fur hero is what i like to call him but okay we'll give him a little bit of maybe we'll give me a little bit of grace for that one <laughs> yes i i think so i think so <laughs> but, but yeah. and thank you for having me on so i could thank jesse and lisa and um we will definitely be enjoying everything that you sent and so i thank you again so much yeah. i know Yes, Aunt Lynn, you know, anytime you are welcome to come on the channel. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank you so much for joining me today. That was right. fun. Always it, was fun. Just, it was wonderful. Well, anyhow, thank you guys for hanging out with us. And we hope to see you next time. Mwah. Wonderful day. Make sure you thank a veteran, a caregiver, a military spouse, and a child for their service and sacrifice. And go to those cemeteries. Yes. Pay your respects. All Have right. a wonderful May, everyone. Yes, thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye.